second part of the attempt to access a hard drive by freezing. I had my hard drive <coughs> outside uh, in a freezing, freezing cold for a long, long time. The hard drive is cold. Ouch. Alright, it's cold outside. Alright, so, moment of truth. Wow. Well, the hard drive doesn't even want to start up. I don't hear clicking yet. But I don't see it mounting either. Okay. That noise you hear means the heads have crashed, as you can see. This is what uh, this hard drive has, so freezing will not help. No amount of freezing is going to help this hard drive. Uh, this hard drive needs to be opened, heads needs to be transplanted. All right. Let's see what we can find. My <coughs> suspicion is that heads on this hard drive are no good. My suspicion is that this drive has been damaged beyond a reasonable repair. We are going to open the hard drive right now. While it's cold, I'd like to see what's happening inside as it's thawing. Um, if you've watched my first part of this video, you heard the hard drive was fairly quiet. I mean, there was a little bit of hissing noise, but nothing major. After it was frozen, the noise is much louder, much more pronounced. So the hard drive is much more unhappy. Okay, I don't think there are any more screws. Let's get our trusty screwdriver and crack the lid open. Okay. Boy, this hard drive does not like. Oh, there's another one. Does not like to be frozen. All of the um, come on, where are you? Over here. No. Right here. <clears throat> uh, all of the seals are wow third one oh my god I'm sorry uh, never seen three of them seen two of them all right moment of truth And as you can see, the heads are junk. Um, this is a, a classic example of head crash. You can see that the initialization sector it has a scoring on it. Uh, this type of scoring is bad. Um, also, you can see right here, 
this is condensation. Uh, you really don't want to have drive uh, ran with uh, this type of condensation. Now, <coughs> this hard drive has four platters, eight heads. Uh, I don't know if uh, just one of them is bad or more than one of them is bad but head replacement is uh, a concept that I do not fully trust and the reason for it is when we have I'll just draw it when we have eight or four platters okay let's zoom out a little bit and there are one two three four okay so one two three four five six seven eight okay this is the configuration of this hard drive <clears throat> you have to consider the alignment of the heads this way and alignment of the heads this way okay now precision of this hard drive is incredible um, if you are off even by a tiny bit you know one of your heads for example on a, on a new headset let's draw it right here is going to be here. The tracks that are written by original head would not be read. In fact, I do not trust that it is possible to safely or easily replace the heads uh, on the such a complex hard drive. If your hard drive has single head, single surface, possibly dual head, dual surface, um, it may be possible, although in that, in that case uh, you still have, you know, the surface, the two heads, they have to be aligned this way, they have to be aligned this way, okay, everything has to be perfect. It's much more possible, of course, to do it in this type of fashion than this type of fashion. I mean, I don't have enough arrows here. There is another arrow for the bottom one. So, the truth... Um, when hardware manufacturer, hard drive manufacturer, makes these hard drives, they do something called a low-level format. In that format, they tell the platters where the heads are <clears throat> and they put the formatting information onto the hard drives um, that in in turn is um, um, you know the hard drive remembers where which head is going to be writing and reading so uh, the platter replacement that I sometimes see I don't trust it either I mean, I'm not saying it's not possible to do, just the sheer complication of what is involved is impossible. So if you have several platters and you have them on a spindle, this bit has to be aligned with this bit, with this bit, and so on the bottom. Okay, so this one's three platters, for example. When you take it off the spindle, you, you unscrew, unscrew these and uh, remove the platter. No matter how good your tools are, 
that keep the platters in perfect alignment. Okay, there are some tools that basically grab the platters and uh, you hold them tight. I don't know, something like that from several places. So the tool would look something like this and you tighten it really tight um, and uh, you, you basically take the top off but here's the thing if these by the time you're done if this is here and this is here and this is here your heads are not going to read it because the middle platter was no matter how good your tool is it might move and most likely it will move when hard drive is working in a computer and uh, let's do a single surface with two heads and you click save the information okay so the disk is spinning this way the information is written this way but it's also written on the bottom so in effect you're writing in both places at the same time so for example word mom mama is gonna be M A M A that's how I mean this is increasing the speed so in two clicks you know the computer speed is always in clicks in those gigahertz and megahertz in two clicks you wrote four letters this will be even faster so conceptually the more platters you have the faster you're gonna be writing however this increases the complexity when time comes for recovery and repair so that's what we are faced with on this hard drive um, I mean if I had an extra cache I would send this to a lab to see whether it's recoverable so if lab is capable of recovery these are parking zones okay so not much information is there but because the heads are damaged the hard drive is unable to read um, I don't know where it's reading this side or that side I'm not that proficient in the internal hard workings of each particular hard drive um, <clears throat> what they will do is they might do a head replacement here and then force the hard drive to read in these areas because your data as you can see your data is okay um, your data is not really uh, affected all that much um, so it's conceptually possible to recover um, how I honestly I'm in awe of people who are able to do this and if someone is listening and can at least shed the light on how it's actually done um, I'll be sending you my hard drives thank you for watching